Sandy soils, typical to parts of Western Australia and found in South Australia's and Victoria's Mallee country, create considerable and costly grain constraints. In WA, water repellency, resulting in low nutrition use efficiency and poor crop establishment, affects around 10 million hectares. Water repellent soils in Western Australia are fairly common in the West Midlands region, uh, in the central wheat belt and also on the south coast. So the main problem with water repellents is that it leads to uneven wetting of the soil and inefficient use of rainfall and ultimately lower grain yield. WA's annual price tag put on lost production through water repellents is estimated at $250 million. GIDC is investing in a multi-million dollar soils and crop nutrition strategy aimed at managing nutrition after ameliorating these kinds of soil constraints. So through the GRDC and DPIRD project, we are focusing on how removing soil constraints changes soil nutrient supply, but also how it changes crop demand. The effect of inversion tillage on grain yields compared to phosphorus and potassium management is a research focus. Increasingly, growers are turning to inversion tillage to bury topsoil and bring more wettable soils to the surface. There's a number of approaches that growers use to manage water repellent soils. So furrow sowing, claying um, and inversion tillage as examples. But we're most interested in inversion tillage because generally water repellent soils are quite stratified and inversion tillage makes a major change to the position of the nutrients in our soil. Importantly, the tillage treatments, especially rotary spading, had a greater impact on yield than nutrient management treatments. And that seemed to be about improved wettability of the soil profile and the influence of that on soil potassium availability. The work that we've done today using coloured traces to quantify where soil from different layers ends up after inversion tillage has shown that moldboard plough generally does the best job of inverting soil and that you can bury 70 to 80 per cent of your topsoil, usually at 10 to 30 centimetres. And with rotary spading, you're likely to end up with 30 per cent or so of your topsoil remaining in the surface. But it does a better job of mixing the different layers. Craig says part of the yield benefit and response to rotary spading was due to some extent to improved access by crops to nutrients such as potassium, which allows plants to use water more efficiently. Clearly by removing a soil constraint you're increasing yield and changing um, nutrient demand, but from a nutrient supply point of view, potassium supply seems to be where the main change is occurring after ameliorating these soils. The addition of lime to water repellent soils can prove helpful, but falls short of addressing plant access to potassium. We included lime as a treatment to try and increase subsoil cation exchange capacity and, in, and decrease the rate of leaching of potassium. And while we did increase subsoil cation exchange capacity, it didn't increase the soil K supply to the crop. Growers are encouraged to measure water repellents prior to and after soil amelioration practices, such as spading, to better understand the consequences or benefits of improving water infiltration. The soil testing is a valuable way for estimating soil nutrient supply and what your fertiliser requirements might be. And one of the questions we had going into this project was whether they would still hold true for soils that have been ameliorated and an interesting outcome from our long-term field experiment is that the calibration for potassium in particular still holds true. It's early days yet, but progress is being made to help growers better balance tillage and nutrition on water repellent sands. We're a year into the project and got a couple of years to go. Our work so far is clearly showing that removing the constraint increases yield potential and nutrient demand and we'll continue with a series of experiments that quantifies how soil nutrient supply is changed by removing soil constraints. Go to the description bar below for the latest information, links and resources.